Okay. I think we are live on Facebook. Yep, just about there. And hi, everybody on Facebook. I'll be there in just a second. We had a little technical difficulty here. All of a sudden, everything came crashing to a crashing halt. Don't know. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. So I don't know. It should just be easy today. Um, anyway, so give you guys a minute to catch up because I know there is a bit of a delay. If you are on Facebook, you can also be watching this on Twitch. Um, it is QFOM Gray is my channel. It's twitch.tv. Okay. If you are a Amazon Prime subscriber, you can subscribe to my Twitch channel for free which is beneficial for me. Um, it's one way of contributing if you haven't contributed yet and it's free to you. So um, anyway, would really appreciate it if everybody would um, give us a little subscription. Okay, so so Twitch, um, Andy is relaying all the questions on Twitch so I will answer it there and I'm sorry, what was the other thing you said Andy? Okay, so, oh, Andy just wanted to let you know that Twitch is officially up. You might, um, you might have a bit of a delay over there because of a commercial. If you don't like that commercial, subscribing will get rid of the commercials. Anyway, so, okay, today is Wednesday of week seven. We are doing student, um, student tips. So, quite a few of you, a handful of you, uh, posted a bunch of, um, tips and I have a few of my own to share so I thought that we would just share today um, all of the the tips so let's get started um, so the first thing Janet Libby had um, had shared was good tools you know what yeah th that's the thing so there was a person who was just getting started. She reached out to me and said, hey, can you put together some tools? And then I, I gave her a list and she goes, hey, but I found this other kit. And um, can I go with that? I said, yeah, you like cheap tools. Here's the story, okay? There's, there is no, um, I can't, tw sorry, Andy's asking me to, to change the Twitch camera. I really can't switch that Twitch camera much, okay? So we're gonna leave that camera there and I'll just step backwards how's that so anyway um, so the the tools you know what buying cheap tools if you already have them from something else so be it but if you're getting ready to buy tools you're gonna end up throwing those those cheap tools away anyway at some point so you'll end up buying twice so for me the rule of thumb is buy the best that you can afford that way you won't be buying twice because in the end if you bought cheap tools for ten dollars and then you invest in the expensive tools for thirty dollars you really spent forty you didn't just spend thirty so that's that's the big um, that's the big tip there so always buy the best that you can and if you really can not afford great tools another thing too that you really should consider is don't buy gadgets save the money for better tools that are more functional, that have more than one function. Gadgets ha typically only are good for one function, and there's always ways of working around a gadget. You know, I always go back to the the strawberry pinchers. I know a lot of people have no clue what I'm talking about, but believe it or not, they sell these things called strawberry pinchers to take the top off the strawberries. I know most of you are sitting there going, "You can use a paring knife." Exactly the point. So. You know, gadgets are fun and they're great, and we sell not a lot of them, but we do sell some. And if you, if it makes your life that much easier, so be it. But if you can't afford it, buy tools that are much more functional rather than one-use tools. So there's that. So now that you've invested in some really good tools, what you want to do is you also need want to make sure you mark your tools. Okay. So if you've been watching a along the way, you'll notice that a lot of my tools have these um, rubber bands on them. And they're not, that's, they're, they're rubber and they're bands, but we call them tool bands. And uh, we sell them on our site so that you can mark your tools, especially when you are out at a show or at in a class, because you definitely want to mark them because you don't want anybody else walking away with them. OK, 
okay and the reason why I like the tool bands is because it doesn't damage my tools doesn't mar I, you know and it's fairly permanent until you break it off and also for me in the studio what I do is I like to um, I like to mark my tools in two different colors okay because <laughs> remember I'm cheap so I only have certain tools. I don't have duplicate. I ain't duplicates of them. Real expensive ones. I don't have duplicates of them. So I mark them to make sure that I know I need to take them to an event with me instead of just leaving them here. And then so it's different from the ones that always stay here and the ones that get to go. Because uh, another thing too is I don't necessarily want to take all my expensive tools to class because they have a tendency to walk away. So that's another reason why I mark. My, you'll see that my tools are marked in different colors so that I have different sets. If you don't have tool bands, another great thing is glitter um, nail polish. Mm -hmm. Because chances are somebody doesn't have a glitter color that you've chosen. <laughs> and it's a little bit more permanent than Sharpies and they're fun and they're sort of pretty. And I've seen lots of these, lots of people um, use glitter nail polish and I just sort of go, oh look, it looks, sometimes if you do it like a dot, it looks like a rhinestone on your, on your tool. So that's really cool too. So that's it for tools. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move the camera down. It's going to be a little bit fidgety today with the camera because um, some of these things are just sort of big and um, a little cumbersome to show, but let's, let's get there, okay? Let's go ahead and move the um, Facebook camera first. Okay. Let's see. There we go. And then I am going to move the Twitch camera and hopefully not turn it off like the other day. Oops. Make sure I put something stable on there. Okay, camera's going to fall off here in a second. Sorry. Okay. I think we are there. All right, so another tool that I love having on my workbench um, is a toothbrush, believe it or not. I always have a toothbrush running around on my workbench. It's good for enameling. It's good for getting into tiny little places. If you have like um, dust or debris, it's a, it's nice and soft. It doesn't do any damage and you always, you know, I've always had a toothbrush in my toolbox, regardless of which toolbox it is, whether it's the one that is um, for hardware that's in the garage or one that is on my um, jewelry bench. So just trust me on that one. Keep an old toothbrush, um, the, the next toothbrush you get ready to throw away, wash it really well and put it on your workbench. So it's really great there. Okay. Um, and then Marcy sent a whole bunch of little um, tips, which I love. So one of the tips that she sent was about sanding. So we all have sandpaper, and I mentioned this before, is one of the first things is um, how to make your sandpaper last a little bit longer. And if you have wet, dry sandpaper after you've been sanding for a while, you can definitely rinse it off, let it dry, and um, and use it again. It will extend the life of your sandpaper. All right. It's but a lot of times you need a little bit more stability on your sandpaper than just your hands. So the trick, the next trick, is to take out maybe a tongue depressor or a, a popsicle stick and stick it on there. Okay, and it makes a really great tool. So now you have. Now you have this great tool and you can sand whatever you want. You have a nice stable surface for which to sand it on. A lot of you will say, oh, you know, I like to use my nail file, okay? And nail files are also great, except the problem with nail files is that they're expensive. And I have also noticed that they don't exactly come in the grit that I want. So by doing it this way, I always have the grip grit that I want. If this business here of rolling it around annoys you, then what you can do is glue it on with some um, rubber cement. It's a really simple thing, but 
it's interesting I have found that a lot of people don't know this about um, rubber cement so I thought that I would share so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna wrap some sandpaper around and I'm gonna trim this okay so here we are just gonna trim this down and then I'm going to put glue rubber cement in particular I like rubber cement because it's it works very well it's very effective and it's also easy to remove so I'm going to put some rubber cement on my tongue depressor or again you can use a popsicle stick a used one's fine too you can wash it and I'm just gonna lean it up over here oops and I'm going to put a little bit of um, rubber cement on the back of the sandpaper also so someone suggested a paint stir stick those are free which is great you can go to any hardware store and do that so it's great you can have a paint stir stick you can use a tongue depressor and you can also use a popsicle stick me I would have all three then I have all my sizes um, to choose from okay so you're going to put the rubber cement down and you want to let it dry and the same thing here on the um, on on the sandpaper by letting it dry this will actually stick better and to put it on both surfaces it's a little tackier and it's but it's nice so I'm going to put it right on here and I'm going to wrap it around really nice and tight like so make my crease and I'm pulling pretty tight because I, I want this to be tight on my stick so if you don't feel like making your own we also have these on the site and I think it comes with six different grits and they're half round which is also really nice okay so here there it is let it dry not um, for a little bit about 10 15 minutes and that'll be really nice and grippy for you and then when you're done take it out and reuse the um, the tongue depressor simple the other thing too is what if you're making a lot of rings and curved surfaces nothing like a great set of dowel rods right and you can do the same exact thing for the dowel rods is you can wrap it around a dowel rod so that you can go on the inside of a ring or work any curved surfaces and again it's really nice to have a variety of sizes dowel rods are really inexpensive and you can get it at the craft store or um, or the hardware store or heck you can even grab a chopstick let's see I know of course I have a chopstick on my workbench so there it is so you could also use a, a chopstick and that makes it really small but sometimes you know again having a larger surface is really nice when you're doing the inside of a ring and of course you never know what size ring you have so I like having my different sizes to work with so um, okay so then another tip from Marcy was to use a you know, I don't know why I never thought about this. This is a really great tip. So to use a um, toothpick. So what's really nice about a toothpick is for many, many different things. So here I have this tiny little piece, right? And if I want to get into these small little places, first of all, you can use it to clean these areas out of debris if you have any. And then another thing that you can do there is you can take out um, your steel wool which is pretty cool so take out a little bit of steel wool here and just wrap it around wrap it around the toothpick look at, look at that okay so check that out you can see that and you guys can see that see and then you can use this to get into the tiny little spaces like so. 
see that. So it's really cool. Toothpicks are great. You know, I always, it, it's interesting, I always have toothpicks on my workbench for different reasons. And wow, I just found another use for a toothpick. Okay. And I know you might not like steel wool so much. A lot of people really detest steel wool, but it does have its function. If you really hate it, you can get brass wool. It might save you for other things. All right, so last tip from Marcy, which I thought was great and where I'm gonna expand on it even, is if you don't have a tripod, what can you do? Well, you can take out your fire bricks, okay? And you can create your own tripod. Well, I thought about this for a second, you know, um, she said you can put your honeycomb block on there. So the reason why we're doing this is what if you need to get that torch underneath your piece? So this is a great quick way to create a tripod for yourself. But what if you don't even have a, um, a honeycomb block and you need to create a mesh? Because if you had a tripod, you would already have the mesh. Why would you do this, right? So what if you don't have the mesh? Well, another thing you can do too is you can take some steel wire, uncoated steel wire. You don't want the um, the coated stuff because once you fire on it, it's it's sort of toxic. You really don't want to be breathing that stuff in. But notice, I just sort of made this wackadoo bird's nest, right? Can you see that? And same thing. I'm going to put it right here which means I can put whatever I want right in there and torch from underneath. So it's another, um, it's another way of creating a tripod for yourself if you don't have a tripod. So, and you know, what's also great about doing something like this with the, um, with the, uh, bleh, with the steel wire is, you know, you can create it so that it conforms to your piece. So if you need it to hold certain things in a certain angle and that kind of stuff. It's always nice to have a bit of, um, of steel wire running around. So this is about 20 gauge, but 20 gauge, 18 gauge, somewhere in there, that's always really nice. I wouldn't go to uh, 22 or 24 gauge, but definitely 20 gauge is nice, okay? Oh. If you didn't catch this before, where am I getting these um, these blocks, these fire bricks? These fire bricks came from the um, the brickyard, and they only cost about a dollar fifty-two dollars a piece. So if you have a brickyard near you, go in there, and they actually come into in two colors. They come in this 1970s <laughs> cream color, but it all, they also come in red. And what's What's sort of fun about going out to the brickyard is they sort of look at you and go, so you want two bricks, do you? And then at some point you need to explain to them why you want it and it makes them feel all better about why you're buying it. But um, I'm not sure that Home Depot or Lowe's carries it. They might, but you definitely want to look for um, fire brick because it because it won't crack. That's that's the key. Is these line the inside of fireplaces? So you want to make sure that um, you get definitely it's called fire brick. Okay. All right. So this tip is sort of funny to me. Okay. This is Pam's thing. It, it makes me laugh because every time I'm I'm with Pam or she's actually watched us on Facebook, we get the little note that says take out your gloves oh yeah I always forget to take out my gloves and you know gloves will save your hands they'll save your manicure I know we're jewelers we really shouldn't worry about our manicures but we're girls we do worry about our manicures right so in any case um, gloves are really cool they're 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 great to save hands and what's nice too is when you're working on on things and you need to hold on to it for sanding okay it's really great for when you're sanding things because then you won't harm your hands and it's nice these these are super grip gloves you see so they they're very grippy so whatever you're holding you know it's it's a nice uh, it's a nice grip so but remember it's funny because when I first got these some um, 12 years ago um, 
I was under the impression that they're heat resistant. They are not heat resistant in any way, shape, or form. Just remember that. And what's nice about these two is it's mesh on the back side so that your hands are, are breathing, so that it's just not getting sweaty in there. So again, it's really nice just to have these for when you're sanding or when you're using the flex shaft and you're doing all kinds of buffing and sanding. It just saves your hands. And um, so that's, that's a tip from Pam. Okay. Stacy sent this tip, which I have not tried, um, but I will share, is uh, about tools. So your tools, you have these nice, pretty tools, but yet for some reason, somehow or another, you've left them for a little while, you come back, and they are rusted. I've actually had that question a couple times. How do you clean rusted tools? Well, my, my first answer is always steel wool. Another one is either um, a, a brass brush or even a steel brush, depending on how bad it is. If it's really bad, I probably would have started with a steel brush first to get it all off and then start buffing it with a brass brush and then steel wool it just to get it back to that nice shine. And I was talking to somebody recently who took the time out to sand it all the way to 1500 grit sandpaper, which means she loves her tools and she likes it to be nice and bright and shiny. So that's, um, that's one way of doing it. But Stacy shared with us that you can use um, organic coconut oil. And, yep, let's see, with a rag, organic coconut oil, and it brings it all back. And um, she says that she's using the Crisco unrefined coconut oil. Um, it's about $8 a jar, and that it brought all of her. Um, all of her her tools back to life again so that's pretty cool I, I, I I'm, I'm digging that now whether or not I'm going to be able to find said coconut oil we'll see or you know or if anything else works if anybody else tries it please share and let me know um, I'd love to know how it goes so since we're talking about tools and keeping it nice here's my other tip how to organize your tools. I know it looks like a mess. It is sort of a mess, but it works really well. So how did I do this? You know, I've been searching and searching and searching for the perfect tool um, tool holder, and it ends up that I now have a tool caddy. So I happen to have um, purchased this, this Lazy Susan at a, um, at a secondhand store, okay? you know, whatever, whatever it takes to find a Lazy Susan, that's what it's on. And I happen to have all of this PVC pipe, okay, that you see there. So literally, this is PVC pipe. So I had some, you know, PVC pipe, and I cut it. These are about three inches on the bottom, and then um, on the top, they're about eight inches, cut at an angle. Let's see. I'll take one out so you can see it. See, so I cut it at an angle, um, just because it made it a little bit more interesting. Uh, no, no other real honest reason why I cut an angle. And I have a table saw, so I could. I know not everybody has a table saw that they could do that with. But anyway, so then what I did was I glued all these pipes together uh, with with hot glue, and even on the bottom, they're all glued on the sides together. I didn't glue along the bottom. And what's interesting is, you know, somebody said, well, isn't that going to fall over? Turns out that when you put this many pieces of PVC together, it's really heavy, which means it's it's creating its own stability. So, um, so anyway, I didn't have to glue it down. And what's also nice about that is that I can adjust this. If I wanted to, I can move this whole unit over, which I did to create more space for myself on my Lazy Susan. Your Lazy Susan might not be this big, so you might not have that kind of space, but at least what's nice is by not gluing it down to the bottom, it's sort of adjustable, okay? Yes, a uh, question was, am I using a hot glue gun? Yes, I'm using a hot glue gun to do that. But you can use whatever makes you happy. I love hot glue. I just think it gets me there really, really quick. And then the other thing too that I did is I um, I spray painted it 
the, the gray color that you see. So, you know, I'm the wackadoo that happens to have enough PVC in the garage, scrap PVC that I could use. And, gee, look, there's a half bottle of gray spray paint. We have no clue why I have gray spray paint. Andy and I went through our brains and tried to figure out where we would have used gray spray paint, but it wasn't there. And, granted, I do have a table saw. Um, if you don't have a table saw, what can you use? Okay, so you can use a um, PVC pipe cutter. This, I think, was about $15 at Home Depot, and you're just going to put it in here. And believe it or not, I'm not going to cut this one because this actually belongs to something. And believe it or not, by ratchet, it's a ratchet system. You can see. And you can ratchet it down, and it will cut the PVC. So you won't be able to get the angles. Actually, maybe you can. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but um, you can definitely cut the PVC with it, and you don't need a table saw to do so. Okay, so that's that's how you can cut PVC. It's sort of easy. It does take a little bit of hand strength. So if you don't have any hand strength, you definitely couldn't do it. But it's not like you need a ton of hand strength to do it. So be careful. Um, oh, just to mention what size this is, I forgot. Let me take a look. Let's see. This is one and three quarter inch. I, you know, I would not go any smaller, and I would definitely consider going to two inch also. And here's why. Depending on um, what size tools you have, some people, you know, I'm a little jelly, but I'm going to leave it there. Some people have all matching tools, and that's so cool, but I don't. So, like, I have these crazy big kibas, right? And so, look, they take up a lot of space. So had I gone with, like, two-inch tools, or I'm sorry, two-inch pipes, this would have fit a lot better. And, you know, it's nice for, like, I think you can see that there, these, these small ones. I can fit three in here. But when I get into these bigger ones, it gets a little cumbersome, or like my Lindstrom's with the Ergo um, handles. It's a little bit small to be able to put three into one one holder and so it would have been a little bit more um, space efficient shall we say if I had gone with the two inch but again I was using scrap material all this was put together with scrap and I, I'm sure you recognize my my wee yogurt jars that I'm using for the different uh, scrap metals that I have so there all right you might need to file the ends a little bit but no big deal just a little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of filing um, if you have any sharp edges, okay? So that's the um, that's the tool holder. Let's see what else we have here. Painter's tape. Linda brought this up. So painter's tape. You know what? I think that every jeweler's workbench should have painter's tape for one reason or another. You know, it, it always comes in handy. I have found that many times, like, oh, look, I can take out some tape and we and use that. And painter's tape is nice because it's not gummy. It doesn't get things sort of cruddy. But her tip is if you're bezel setting and you want to protect your stone, what you can do is take out a little painter's tape and put it over your stone, okay? And then what? And then what I do is I take out my exacto knife and I'll trim it. And it should be it should be okay um, unless you have a really soft stone. You should be okay just to cut it right there. I'm sorry, Andy, what did you say? Okay. So you can see how I've done that. And then over here. Okay. So by do by putting the tape on, you're protecting it for when you are rolling your your bezel. So here I'll show you. So once you start doing your bezel, you see, you can, and if you slip, 
you're going to slip onto that tape, which is nice. Um, painter's tape is really nice. In a pinch, I'll use um, scotch tape. It is not a bad thing either, but I think painter's tape is definitely the better way to go. Okay, so let me take that off and go to the next one. All right, so while we are doing that, that ring, I've mentioned this one a few times before, but I don't know. I always come back to this one because I, I, I love this little idea of mine. Um, so they do sell dust collectors, but dust collectors are really expensive. They're about $70. And way back when, I was like, okay, I really don't want to pay for a dust collector. What can I do to collect dust? This, if you look at it, is a um, pretzel jar, a plastic pretzel jar. And it's, you know, um, the, the pretzel jar is typically, or the cheese balls are typically in round containers. And so this one is actually pub mix and we got it from Costco. Anyway, so why do I, I like this one better than the round one? So it doesn't roll away. Okay, so the round ones do have a tendency to roll. So what I do here is I'll take out this, I, after you consume what's inside or you can throw away what's inside, but whatever, clean it out and you take out a box cutter and cut the bottom out and watch what will happen is you take out your flex shaft and your polish and your piece and you polish inside of this box and what's nice is this is clear so you can see what's going on and you can um, you know so, so it's not exactly like you're polishing this blind or doing anything blind so it's in here and you can do you can do drilling or whatever you want if you have anything that's dusty or throws a lot of dust. This is really great to keep it down. Um, another thing that you can do too, and this was brought up by a student, is put a shower cap on both ends and cut a slit in it and that, that also reduces the dust even more. So that's what's really great about this. Now, a little hint though, if you've been polishing a lot inside of this, when you're done, don't just flip it over to put it away because what's going to happen is all this dust is going to fall <laughs> either on the floor like that's never happened before or on um, on your workbench so before you do that get in the habit of just walking it over to the trash can put it over the trash can give it a few taps and take get the dust out of there before you put it away okay so there it is that is my um, my dust collector idea. All right. And let's see. Snipping. Okay. So some, some working, um, working tips and not just tools. Hold on two seconds here. Okay. So when you are um, cutting metal, one of the things if you're making a square, one of the things we always do is we like to take down the corners of the squares okay so to take down the corners a lot of people I find will sit here and file these corners just like this and it takes forever and chances are you're not going to get an even corner by filing so what I do is I'll nip it at an angle okay so with just a pair of cutters and that gets my corner started very quickly to create just a, a radius and you can sniff it as much as you want depending on what kind of radius you're looking for so this gets you there again really 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 fast which is nice because you know what who wants to sit around filing all day long but anyway so that's how you can get corners really quickly okay so if you are stamping and um, doing various stamping projects, one of the things that um, is helpful is get yourself a roll of Stamp Perfect tape. What is this stuff, right? It is simply basically graph paper that I designed on washi tape and if you look really closely there's a um, don't, there is a red line for every five so that you don't have to count it but this by putting it on your metal for stamping 
will give you a guideline and will also show you um, how far apart to space things. So that's another tip too is you know a lot of people have a hard time spacing all their letters when they're stamping so instead of sitting here marking 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 you can just use a tape okay some people also like to use the tape by stamping right on top of the tape instead of above it you know, I like to, to stamp above the tape but some people like to stamp right on the tape um, if you do that you're going to need to make sure you take out that toothpick and dig out all this the tape that is inside of the stamping. Um, so you can also use this for bezel setting. Okay, uh, you know, actually, if you have this tape, you can use it instead of the um, the painter's tape, also. And I, if you are a bead weaver, I know that I have a bead weaver out there who uses this because it helps her um, space things out properly. It's great. It's great. Um, to, uh, to not have to count all the time because they're spaced out uh, precisely for you. Okay. Um, so, was that a tip from somebody about the bezel setting, Andy? Okay. Um, yeah, so I, somebody's pointing out they're using it for bezel setting. I'm not completely sure how they're doing that, but now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, not completely sure, but I'm I'm sure it's helpful. Next time I sit down, do a bezel, I will have to um, put it to use and think about that. Okay, so here's a tip slash hack is the wood wedge. You've seen me use this before, but what if you don't have a wood wedge? So it's also called a forming block, okay? So we use these while making rings and um, and bracelets. So typically you would put your your mandrel in there, put your metal in there, put your mandrel in there, and it helps you form your metal, which is great because it sort of holds it in place, right? If you don't want to buy one, you can take out a really, really thick, um, see, so check out how thick this is, right? Um, a really, really thick book or magazine, I'm sorry, catalog and you can use the middle of that for a wood wedge. Um, the other advantage of doing it this way is that it sort of does deaden the sound a little bit, so if your um, kids, spouse, whoever are sleeping, eh, it might help. Now, uh, before, years ago, five, six years ago, when I first started doing this, I would say, hey, get a telephone book. And it's funny, because I looked at Andy this morning, I'm like, do we have a telephone book? No we haven't seen a telephone book in years so if you still have a telephone book around you know that's what you can use it for I just happen to have this ridiculously big catalog in my arsenal to use so that is a tip slash hack um, of the the wedge okay so I'm gonna give a couple more tips before I move the camera because it's a really big move. So a couple more tips that I don't have is, um, and a couple more tips that I ha I don't have, but I know of the tips and I know they work, is Deb Heller had mentioned yellow ochre. She literally says, yellow ochre has saved my sorry butt on more than one occasion. So what is yellow ochre? Yellow ochre is this organic substance. It's a paste that you can buy. And how is it saving her? The thing is, if you're soldering pieces and your solder is running all over the place, what you can do is take yellow ochre and you can paint it down and it will keep the solder from flowing. It restricts where the solder flows. So where you have the ochre, the solder will not flow there. Now, some people will also say you can use liquid paper. Remember that, that uh, what else is it called? It's called correction fluid, okay? Back in the day, most people don't use it anymore. But anyway, there is a little bit of a problem with using liquid paper. It's a little toxic. So, be, so you know, I can't exactly recommend it. I know it's a tip and I know somebody's going to jump in there and say, hey, you can use liquid paper. 
So you need to sort of make a decision here how you want to go forward with that from a, but again, from what I understand, it is toxic. So be careful with that. I'm sorry, Andy, what did you say? Okay, uh, the, there was a question about the tape. It's called Stamp Perfect Tape, and it is available on the website. I did post um, several links on on what I was showing today, the wood wedge being one, the tape, and also, oh, I don't think I posted the, the center finder, but anyway, it is in the link and it is at theherbeater.com, okay? So anyway, I think that makes sense about the yellow ochre. You're gonna have to do a little bit of Googling to be able to find it. It's not so readily available, but it is a, definitely an old timer trick. It's been around for a long, long, long time. Um, and then another trick comes from Cheryl. She says, dowel rods, or I'm sorry, not dowel rods, knitting needles. We brought this up a few weeks ago. But you know, sometimes you need mandrels and you don't have, I mean, not everybody has mandrels running around. So, you know, I always have a selection of um, wood dowel rods, but if you need something smaller, one of the things you can use are knitting needles. A lot of people, I know you're, you're serial, you're all serial crafters. You're knitting, you're crocheting, you're doing fiber, you're doing metal, doing all kinds of things. So a lot of people do have knitting needles of different sizes. So knitting needles are really great They um, for mandrels. So that's another hack slash tip for you, okay? All right, now for the big move here, a couple of things. Let's see if we can actually get there. Um, so here, I don't know if you can see this. I know you can on Twitch, so let's move this over. All right, this is actually the base of my flex shaft, and I have it screwed into just a piece of board, a scrap board, okay? The flex shaft holder comes in several ways. It comes like this, and typically what people do is they will just screw this right into their workbench. But I know a lot of you don't have a permanent workbench. And heck, I have a permanent workbench, but I don't even screw it in because I, from time to time, I need to move it from one place to another. So what I do is I screw it into a board and I use a C clamp to hold it down. Now, which has made it nice and very mobile for me, then I don't have to have a bunch of these when I travel and whatnot and just take it off my workbench and take it with me. Another thing too is if you have not purchased a flex shaft holder yet, okay, then um, do not, whatever you do, do not buy the flex shaft holder that has a C clamp already welded to it. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> Even the vendor says, Q, don't buy it. Okay, I never did buy it. But if the vendor who is selling it to us is telling us not to buy it, I'm going to have to say don't buy it because apparently it doesn't hold as well as you want it to hold. And that's the key there. So again, this is going to save your, your workbench or your kitchen table because I don't think anybody's going to want to screw this into their kitchen table. And it makes it really mobile and you can easily put it away because this will come off and all parts will come will collapse and it becomes really small. Okay. And then Emily Scott came up with this idea. You know, I have to say, Emily, this is not a disparaging remark. It was so stinking simple that I was like, oh my God, I'm just dumb. I can't believe that I never thought about doing this. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I was laughing. Like, why have I never thought of, this? you know, sometimes simple stupid is just like brilliant, right? So. She said to wrap the, your flex shaft cord around the pole to keep it from moving. Why have I never thought of that? And you know what? Look, this thing doesn't swing around because before, before I wrapped it around, as she advised, this thing was just be swinging all over the place. Wow, this totally created stability <laughs> for the flex shaft. And you know, I, I just, it's just me too, but I don't know why they didn't design these so that they're a little bit more uh, more stiff, shall we say, that they're not swinging all over the place. Okay, so that's for me one of the best tips, okay? And then another thing too that you can do is you can go ahead and throw a big rubber band over 
and when you're done using your flex shaft you can stick it right into that rubber band and it'll hold your um, your handpiece back like so instead of just swinging all over the place that's a tip and but if you don't have a flex shaft pole you can use a um, you can use an IV pole which is great some of you guys have access to it you know you can also get it at used medical supply and whatnot and um, that's the, I, that, that's another way of getting around buying a pole. Um, you can also use a shepherd's hook plants. You just have to find a way to attach said shepherd's hook to your workbench or your kitchen table. Okay, so regarding the flex shaft, people ask all the time, how do you uh, store your chuck so it get lost, right? My answer is I extra. <laughs> I swear I have like three or four of these running around here. I, you know, I keep chucks like people keep um, read, reading glasses, which is really funny to me. Um, but anyway, so that's that's sort of an answer, but it's not necessarily a great answer. And this morning, as I was thinking about all these tips, I was like, you know what? There's a way to do this. So I made myself a ring. Okay, this, this is a inch and inch and a half ring out of 16 gauge wire. Um, I would probably go to two inches but this happened to be my piece of scrap and it worked and I just put it in, you see that? I put it into my um, my chuck and I'm gonna pull on it just like so and I'm gonna pull it over and I'm going to twist it. It's copper, so it's pretty soft. See that? Okay. There you go, one more time. Okay. Yep, I should have made this a bit bigger because then I could slip it right into. I don't know if you can see that. You can't see that. Okay. There's always a screw that's on your flex shaft pole, right? So you can just hook it right on there, or heck, you can hook it right on top of your, um, I don't know if you guys can see that, let's see. You can hook it right on top of here, okay? And, uh, well, it's a hook. It's a, you know, it's just a simple thing to do. May or may not be helpful to you, but I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and uh, see if I, yeah, I'm going to make this bigger probably a little bit later and start using that so that I don't keep looking for my chuck. It's a thing. Okay, so what else we have here? Let's see. Um, ah, okay, so I'm going to get rid of this and show you the next one. This is not where my flex shaft is usually. It's usually off to the side. So I had to do this so I can show you what was going on and I'm completely here off your screen. All right, I'm going to move this down. See, so it, this thing comes apart completely. So which is nice that if you do it with the C clamp, it's completely portable and you don't have to have the shaft hanging out all the time. Again, if you have a permanent workspace, sure, it's great just to have it out, but I know a lot of you are working off your kitchen table and it's nice to be able to make things a little bit more consolidated. Okay, so this next tip is from Asia Rain. She is um, one of our instructors at Santa Fe, uh, or the, the Metal Immersion Santa Fe, what was going to be Metal Immersion Santa Fe. And, you know, I wanted to share really quickly, we have officially decided to uh, postpone it, cancel the Metal Immersion Santa Fe, which was happened in March um, and we pushed it to September but we're not real feeling incredibly comfortable the September date which feels like it's in the corner although you know six weeks ago it felt like it was a year away we are pushing for March we'll announce dates as soon as we have them but um, if he was looking forward to doing the Santa Fe metal immersion that is the this is where we are okay so Asia had this trick which I thought was again so simple 
but brilliant, right? So what is this? This is a, uh, a pool noodle <laughs> that you can buy at the dollar store for literally a dollar. Okay, so as you can see, I haven't cut mine off yet. But anyway, so what you'll do is cut a slit in it. Okay, and then depending, and so what we're going to use this for is we're going to use this for a wrist protector. Because, you know, a lot of times when you're working, you have your wrist um, resting. And it's resting on something that's not nice. So this gives it something sort of gushy. Okay, so I'm going to one more time. There we are. Oops. Hold on, Twitch, everybody. I'm getting there. There we are. Okay. Let's see if I can get that. Okay. So here in my workbench, I have, um, let's see, sorry, a little more adjustment. So I have this board. It's it's actually a under counter drawer, okay. And I would rest my hands on here for various things. And there's various places. Everybody has a slightly different workbench. But how cool is this on that board to put this right in there? And then you would just cut it to size. How cool is that? And you would just have this nice, gushy piece of foam to rest your hands. And heck, you know what's great? These come in like all kinds of colors. Match your um, <laughs> match your decor with it. So and have a lot of it. But I love this tip. I it's again, it's so simple, but yet brilliant why didn't I think of this okay so that's that and that is about where we are today let's see anybody else have something they can share maybe let's see so or please do share it on our Facebook I still have the uh, post up and other people can see it we would love to see it, to see it. heck some of these tips I'm definitely using for at this point, and I'm sure you'll be sharing that along the way as we're working for new projects. Just want to take a minute out to say thank you to everyone who have contributed or are subscribing and um, to Twitch and following along. I really appreciate your support. It's been really cool. So to have a little fun tonight, we are going to have a Zoom party at the bench. A little wine on Wednesday at the bench. So it's going to be 30 Eastern time. If you have not received the link and have uh, put out a request, please send me a note that said that uh, to, to let me know that you haven't received it. I'll send you a link. If you want to join us, you can definitely still join us. Send me a, a, um, a message either on the QTalk page or to me privately, and I will send you a link at 4 30. Our wine is chilling, and I am ready to go. 30 this evening. Um, we're also ready for our Friday uh, for our Friday uh, Zoom project. This is called Outsider. Okay, and it's a bit of a prong setting. I'll show Zoom, uh, Twitch also over here. And um, if you want to get in on that, you still can. It, it is. Uh, we still have some kit, but you can definitely jump in on the Zoom on Friday. It is on our Facebook. I'm sorry. On on our webpage, theurbanbeater.com. Uh, ready for next week. We've got a couple projects for Monday and Wednesday is going to be demo day again. It's going to be what happens when solder fails. So have some problems that you haven't been able to figure out. Do send it to me and I will address it or at least try to address it. But there's a few things that we can go over and have fun with that. I'm getting the next Zoom project here probably today or tomorrow and uh, I'm excited pretty excited it's going to be an enamel project it's going to see if I have it anywhere near I can show you oh here we go so um, there we are for twitch people 
and here we are for Facebook. Okay, so that's going to be the next uh, big Zoom project is going to be enameling and setting. All right, that's it. Again, thank you so much for following along. Thanks for being here. It is hump day. We're going to have fun this evening at 4.30. Have a little bit of um, wine and a little bit of fun, whatever. Don't know. This is going to be the first one. So we'll have fun. We'll see you on Monday. Thanks for being here. Bye. I know. Hanging out on Facebook. Let's see. Okay. All right, bye.